All right, today's notes are 10.2, probability, an intro to probability. So probability and the multiplication and addition rules for probability. So first thing we need to review is what probability means. It's the likelihood of an event, the chance that an event will happen. It can be expressed as a fraction, as a decimal, or a percent. A probability of zero means that an event cannot happen. It's impossible. Probability of one means that an event is certain to happen. It will happen. It's guaranteed to happen. Um, when we look at this notation right here, P parenthesis A parenthesis, this P stands for probability, and A is the event. The way we often calculate probability of an event A is we take the total number of favorable outcomes, in other words, the number of ways A can happen, and divide by the total number of possible outcomes. So remember, total number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. That's the simplest way to calculate probability, and we will use that quite a bit. Independent events. Two events are independent if they do not affect each other. If one event happening does not change the probability of the other event happening. Examples of that would be flipping a coin twice. Um, if the first flip lands heads, that doesn't affect what's going to happen on the second flip. Probability of that second flip being heads is still one half. Two rolls of a die. First one doesn't affect the second one. Flipping a coin and rolling a die. The coin toss does not affect the roll of the die. Spinning a spinner and choosing a number from a bag. Drawing things from two separate containers. Selecting two items with replacement. If you replace the first before you select the second. Um, read through those. Make sure you understand the notion of independent events. Dependent events. Two events are dependent if the outcome of one affects the outcome of the other. In other words, if one event happening changes the probability of the other event happening. Examples of that would be selecting two items without replacement. Maybe you're selecting two marbles from a bag um, if you don't replace the first one before you draw the second one, that changes the probability. Okay, so read through dependent events. Make sure you understand those. Often, uh, it's hard to tell sometimes whether two events are dependent or independent. Um, we'll talk more about independent events again next time. Probability of independent events we're going to look at the multiplication property, or the multiplication rule for probability. If two events A and B are independent, so we have two independent events A and B, probability that A and B both happen, so this is the probability of A and B, that will equal the probability of A times the probability of B if A and B are independent. Okay, let's do some examples. In a board game, each player has three different colored markers. They have a yellow, a red, and a blue. To move around the board, the player first spins a spinner like the one shown here to see which piece will be moved. Then the player rolls a die to determine how many spaces that piece will move. On a given turn, what is the probability that a player will be able to move the yellow piece more than two spaces? So here's how I'm going to write it. Probability of yellow, so they're going to move the yellow piece, the spinner has to land on yellow. So the probability that the spinner lands yellow and the die is greater than two, that our dice, that our die rolls more than two. So these two are independent events. The spinner will not affect the roll of the die. So what we're going to do is take the probability that we have a yellow 
from the spin times the probability that our die rolls greater than 2. Okay, so the probability of yellow is going to be one third because the yellow, the red, and the blue, if you look at the spinner, the yellow, the red, and the blue, they're the same size sections of the spinner. So that probability is going to be one third. Only one of the three sections is yellow. So favorable outcomes is one, total number of outcomes is three. Times probability that our die lands greater than two. Well, remember on the die we have six sides representing one, two, three, four, five, and six. Greater than two is four of the six outcomes. So what we will have for the probability that we have greater than two on the die is favorable outcomes of four divided by total number of outcomes of six. I'm going to change that four six to a two thirds and then I'm going to multiply those fractions. How do we multiply fractions? Multiply numerators, multiply denominators. So our answer is two ninths. But I also want to look at what this would be if we changed it to a decimal. So we grab our calculator, we do two divided by nine, and that comes out to 0 0.2222, and I'm just going to round it to four decimal places. Um, so now I've rounded it off. I'll put an approximation symbol there. And if I change that to a percent, it would be 22.22%. All right. Notice that our fraction is between 0 and 1, our decimal is between 0 and 1, and our percent is between 0 and 100%. Okay, part B. A die is rolled three times. Find the probability of rolling a 1 or a 2, then a 3, and then anything other than a 5. So we're doing three things. We have three events happening. We have rolling the die once, a probability of rolling a 1. I'll just separate it with the colon. Second time we're going to roll, we want, oh wait, first one I want a 1 or a 2. 1 or 2. Second roll, I want a 3. And the third roll, I want anything other than 5. So I'll just say not 5. Okay? Each of the die rolls is independent of the other. What happens on the first does not affect the second and so forth. So we can do the multiplication property. We'll do the probability that the first roll is a 1 or 2 times the probability that the second roll is a 3 times the probability that the third roll is not five. Okay, a one or a two. I'm just gonna look at my list up here again. On that die, the total number of outcomes is six. Favorable outcomes for rolling a one or two. That's two, two possibilities, right? A one or a two. Probability rolling a three, that's one out of six. And probability rolling something that's not 5, that's 5 out of 6, right? Look at our list. If it's not 5, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6. That's 5 out of the 6 possibilities. I'm going to reduce a little bit, make that 2, 6, a 1 third. And then I'm going to do some multiplying. If I multiply all those together, 1 times 1 times 5 is 5. 3 times 6 times 6, grab a calculator, that's 18 times 6, or 3 times 36, which comes out to 108. So our answer is 5 over 108. If we wanted to change that to a decimal, we would grab a calculator and we would divide 5 by 108. That's going to be 0 0.04, those are just my approximation symbols, 0 0.0463 when I round it to four decimal places. And if I change that to a percent, that's 4.63%. Remember, to change a decimal to a percent, we move the decimal point two places to the right. 
So a little under 5% is the probability. Or we would expect that almost five times out of 100, this would happen. Okay, a fair coin is flipped several times in a row. What is the probability of flipping heads 10 times in a row with a fair coin? Okay, so we're gonna do the probability of 10 heads, or heads 10 times in a row. We have a fair coin. What we need to understand is the probability of heads each time is one half. And these events are independent. What happens on the first toss doesn't affect what happens on the second. So what we have is the probability of heads times the probability of heads times the probability of heads, but we're gonna do that 10 times. And the probability of heads each time is one half. So we're gonna do one half 10 times. We're multiplying one half with itself 10 times because it literally is probability of heads times the probability of heads times the probability of heads each time, okay? So we have one half to the 10th power, which is gonna be one to the 10th over two to the 10th. One to the 10th is just one. And two to the 10th is 1,024. So our answer is one over 1,024. Okay. Um, what is the probability of flipping heads on the 11th flip if you've already flipped 10 heads in a row? Well, because the flip of a coin is an independent, because the flip of the coin is independent, it's always going to be one half. The fact that we flip 10 heads in a row does not affect the probability of the 11th flip being heads. It's still one half. Okay, so the answer to this last question, one half. Okay. Let's talk about probability of two dependent events. So the probability of two dependent events both occurring is given by probability of A and B. Remember that's A and B. There's A and B. Now we're talking about dependent events. Dependent. Last we're, we're independent, now we're dependent. So the probability of two dependent events both occurring is given by the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B given that A has happened. That's how we read that one, the probability of B given that A has happened, or the probability of B given A. Another way of writing it would be the probability of A then B happening, and that will equal the probability of A times the probability of B after A. We can use either one of those um, notations. They are the same thing. Okay, so let's do a couple of examples. Um, example right here. There are seven green suckers, five red suckers, and nine orange suckers in a bag. Two suckers are chosen without replacing the first one. Find the probability of picking a green and then a red. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the probability that we choose a green Notice we're doing this without replacement. So these are dependent events. Okay, dependent because we're doing this without replacement. So the probability of a green, we're just gonna use this formula up here. Probability of a green then red is gonna equal the probability of green times the probability of red after green. And that is going to be, see the probability of green, let's think about that. There are seven green, five red, and nine orange. So that's a total of 21 suckers. So on that first draw, the probability of drawing a green is seven out of 21, because there are seven favorable outcomes over the 21 total outcomes times, let's look at the probability of red after green. So if we've drawn out a green one, there are 20 suckers left. How many of those are red? That would be five. 
So we do 7 out of 21, which is 1 third, times 5 out of 20, which is 1 fourth. So the probability of green then red is going to be 1 twelfth. And this time I'm just going to leave it as a fraction rather than writing as a decimal or a percent. Probability of drawing two oranges or pulling out two oranges in a row. That will be the probability of orange then orange. Right? Orange then orange. That's going to equal the probability of the first one being orange times the probability of orange given that the first one was orange. Let me write that a little smaller. Probability of orange given that the first one was orange. I'm going to have to abbreviate orange here, guys. We'll write it this way. Running out of room. Okay, so the probability of the first one being orange. So the total number of outcomes is 21 because there are 21 suckers. The numerator of the fraction is the number of favorable outcomes. There are nine orange suckers in there. Okay, but now on the second draw, if I've drawn out an orange on the first draw, there are eight oranges left and only 20 suckers left. So let's simplify that. Nine over 21 is the same as three over seven. And then 8 over 20, I can reduce that to 2 over 5. You do the multiplication, that becomes 6 over 35. And you could change that to a decimal if you wanted to. You could change it to a percent if you needed to. So 6 out of 35. All right, what is the probability of drawing three odd numbers? So different example. We're off from the suckers to something else. What is the probability of drawing three odd numbers then an even number from a set of cards that show the first 20 counting numbers if no replacement occurs. Read through it again. So we have 20 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 20. We're drawing them out. We're going to draw four of them. We want to know what's the probability that we draw three odds. And then an even. And we're not replacing. So this is dependent because we are not replacing. So these events are dependent. So what that's going to be, so we're drawing four cards. I want the probability that the first one is odd times the probability that the second is odd given that the first is odd times the probability that the third is odd given that the first two were odd times the probability that the fourth one is even given that the first three were odds. We want that fourth draw to be an even after the first three were odds. Okay, well, let's calculate this. So the probability of odd is going to equal, out of those first 20 numbers, how many of them are odd? Half of them, which is 10. So that's 10 out of 20, which is a half. But on the second draw, I've taken out one of the odds. So I now have 9 out of 19, because I've lowered my number of numbers to 19. Third time, there are now 8 odds, only 18 total outcomes. And finally, I still have 10 evens, but I only have 17 cards in there. Let's do some fancy reducing. 10 over 20 is a half. 9 over 19 does not reduce. 8 over 18 reduces to 4 over 9. And 10 over 17 does not reduce. I'm going to reduce some more. I can take out a 9. Divide the numerator and denominator by 9. 
I can divide out of 2. And then what I will have is 1 times 1 times 2 times 10. So there's 20 over 19 times 17. 1 times 19 times 1 times 17. 19 times 17 is, grab a calculator, 323. And there is our answer for that one. All right, I'm going to stop here, and the second video will finish up the notes.